It's Dixon a yard deep in the end zone. Out over the 15-yard line before he is stopped by Lester Lyles. The Dallas Cowboys take over first and 10 and leading them onto the field, the second-year quarterback out of UCLA, number eight, Troy Aikman. When you look at the Cowboy offensive line, please keep in mind that they have a number of players that have never started a single position there, and they are very, very uncertain. Stepnowski is the center. Now checking the backfield, A.G. and Smith with Troy Aikman, Kelvin Martin back off the injured list, Dennis McKinnon, the plan B wide receiver, and the tight end is newly acquired Jay Novacek. When they make a move and go to more passing plays, Rod Harris will come in. At first and 10. The give is to number 34, Tommy Agee, who banged up the middle. He's stopped by Leslie O'Neill. Let's check a very, very tough Charger defense up front. The front seven. Second and seven, just underway from Texas Stadium. Agee in motion. And Aikman to put it up the quick slant and under throws. He wanted McKinnon, but threw the ball away. Yeah, bounce pass is not in the repertoire. <laughs> Now, when the Chargers move to their pass defense, they're going to take Phillips, Plummer, and Figaro out of the ball game and replace them with George Hinkle, Donald Frank, the rookie, and Lester Lyles. That's when they go to the nickel. Another guy they like is Henry Rowling, a linebacker who's impressed them all preseason long, and there's a chance that Rowling will be there in passing situations, too. Third and seven for the Cowboys are moving from their 19-yard line. James Dixon in the ball game now. Three wide receivers for the Cowboys. off the screen to A.G. Picks up a block, has a first down, and is dropped at the 35-yard line. Yeah. yeah, in any screenplay, you like to uh, to give it away and make these defensive linemen of the Chargers think, hey, I got something going here. It fools them, and it fools the secondary. In this case, Lester Lyles had the coverage, and he lost his man momentarily. See, Lester Lyles is to the left there. Maybe the official got in his way, that's his man, man to man. There's no excuse. You've got to be right up in his face. That's a bad play by Lyles. 16 yard pickup. Cowboys moving first and 10 from their own 35 yard line. Play action for Aikman on first and 10. Steps up, has his man, the tight end, Jay Novacek. Novacek to midfield and into San Diego Charger territory before Martin Bayless runs him out of bounds. Great confidence builder for the quarterback, Jay Novacek, one of the Plan B guys who came over from Phoenix. Now, coincidentally, later in the preseason, they drafted for his backup over there, Rob Awalt. So the two of them, you'll probably see a lot of them today. 18-yard pickup on the play, and the Cowboys are rebuilding their staff. Jimmy Johnson told us yesterday when we spoke with him, they have got to reconstruct their entire offense. Yeah, and they have a lot of respect for this Charger defense. So the Cowboys on the move, another first down. From the 47. Here's the pitch back to A.G. Around the right side. Pick up of a few yards on the play. Yeah, and around the right side, the Chargers defensive left was, uh, well, there's Gil Bird. He's one of the most solid cornerbacks in the league today. But a young rookie, well, uh, Junior Seau, playing in there, one of his first plays, number 55. Watch, he's a little bit out of position right there as uh, Timmy Smith, didn't even have to block him. But Junior <laughs> told me in the lobby before the game, he said, uh, if I make a mistake, it'll be at 100%. He doesn't really know the system yet. He's only been in camp a, a little over uh, two weeks. And a real question as to how much he's picked up in that time. A.G. hobbled out with an injury. Daryl Johnson into the ball game to replace him. Johnson is wearing number 48. On second down, he wants to slay. He's got Kelvin Martin. And Martin is down to the 25-yard line. The Cowboys moving first and 10. Well, does Aikman look strong or what? Kelvin Martin coming back from the knee surgery last year. He's been one of the most pleasant surprises this summer for the Cowboys. You can see he's not a real big guy, but Martin is the kind of guy who's so quick, has the speed. Aikman, of course, has to assert himself in this offense this year. He had some terrific games last year, and the way he's starting with a pass like this, crisp on the money, Martin doesn't have to break stride, and receivers, when they're going over the middle, appreciate that. Led the Cowboys in preseason catches, a 19-yard pickup there, and the Cowboys are moving first and 10. The ball on the 25-yard line. That's Johnston shifting in the backfield, and here's the pitch back to Timmy Smith. 
Smith breaks a tackle, but no more. Forcing the play very nicely was Burt Grossman, giving Junior Seo and Billy Ray Smith a chance to close. Terrific play by Grossman, the second-year player out of the University of Pittsburgh. Last year in his rookie season, he had 10 sacks. He can pressure the quarterback, but he can do stuff like that, too. Great quick feet by uh, Grossman on that play, and that makes it possible. You string the play out, give the pursuit a chance to get over there, and Junior Seau getting one of his first tackles in the league. There'll be plenty more. Loss of three, second and 13, clock running, 10.45 to play in the first quarter. We're just underway at Texas Stadium. Aikman with time, long ball, touchdown! time coming 28 yards Troy Aikman to Dennis McKinnon the Cowboys are on the board the rookie Ken Willis to attempt the extra point the Cowboys took the opening kick moved the length of the field and have jumped out to a seven to nothing lead over the San Diego Chargers will return to Texas they let them Cowboys are a little bit surprised it was that easy because, as I said earlier, the strength of this team for the Chargers is that defense. Here is Nate Lewis on the return for the Chargers to the 35-yard line, over the 35. Let's take a look back at the touchdown. Well, again, Aikman, he gets next to no pressure right here, and the pass is perfectly thrown. There are two defenders in decent position, got the ball over Vincey Glenn, and Glenn knocked off Gil Bird. Glenn in better position to make the play, but the ball was so perfectly thrown that McKinnon was able to haul it in. Is that a terrific highlight? You think that'll show up down the road somewhere? I have a feeling. Now the Chargers will go to work on offense. First and Ted, led by quarterback Mark Vlasic. Starting from the 38. And here is the kick to the big fullback, Marion Butts. Let's set the offensive line for the San Diego Chargers, and very much like the depth. Pick up of the yard at second and nine. Plastic the quick out to that man, Anthony Miller. And Miller is run out of bounds shy of midfield. Robert Williams defensively for the Cowboys. And let's set that Cowboy front four. Daniel Stubbs, Dean Hamill, Danny Newman, and the veteran there is Jim Jeffcoat. Your linebackers, Del Rio, Lockhart, the veteran of that group, Ken Norton, and deep it's Isaac Colt, Robert Williams, James Washington starting in place of Ray Horton, who has a stomach virus, and Vince Albritton. And when they go to their deep defensive lineup, the Cowboys bring in Manny Hendricks and Ron Francis. Chargers picked up enough yardage for a first down. They are moving first and 10 now from their own 49-yard line, and they have three wide receivers in the ball game. Classic rolling to his right. Couldn't connect with Anthony Miller. What we saw in the first few plays is what we'll probably see a lot of out of the Chargers. Get the ball to Marion Butts, hope that he picks up a bunch of yards, then throw to Anthony Miller anytime coverage allows. Miller last year cut balls for over 1,200 yards. He is becoming a superstar wide receiver. When we spoke with the Cowboy defensive coaches yesterday, they mentioned to us that they expected the Chargers, when they ran the ball, to run to the right a great deal. And Dan Henning has that tendency. Wherever he's been, his teams are more right-handed, and that's a tendency around the league. Second and ten, Bernstein in motion. Play action to Butts, he just dumped it off. Good defensive play, they smelled out that screen. Coming through to make a big hit is Ken Norton. The outside linebacker and Jim Jeffcoat helped him out. Dave Wenstadt, the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, said that there are certain formations, certain plays they might be able to sniff out. This is a case right here, the great pressure by Jeff Coat right there, a guy who had 11 sacks for the Cowboys last year. Look at the pressures. He breaks in much quicker than they had anticipated. And then Ken Norton has really come into his own this year. The linebacker out of, out of your way, UCLA. UCLA. Absolutely. It's third and 16, Mark Lassen, coming back from serious knee surgery in his first start this year. Of his career is back. He wants Miller. Good reception, and Miller has a first down after. 
after breaking the tackle. Robert Williams tried to wrap him up, but Miller was able to turn it upfield and pick up first down yardage. Yeah, Miller has that great speed that you have to respect, but he's so strong. He has the great upper body strength, and you see it in track stars nowadays. They work out so much in that upper body as well as their legs, and Anthony Miller is a former track star, but he also has the great hands. That's what impressed Charlie Joyner when he scouted him a couple of years ago. Hey, he thought, this guy's not only fast, he can make some great catches, and he can bounce off tacklers. 22-yard pickup for Anthony Miller and the Chargers. They're moving first and 10 from the 36. 8.03 to play in the first quarter. San Diego trailing 7 to nothing. Marion Butts with a blocker in front of him. Dropped on the play by Daniel Stubbs. Stubbs acquired from the San Francisco 49ers in a trade. Back in Super Bowl 24, you'll remember he recorded two sacks and returned a fumble recovery down to the one-yard line. Another man that they are rebuilding their defensive unit with. That's right. He's not your prototypical left defensive end either. He's six foot four, 260 pounds, so there are bigger guys who play left end in the NFL. He was primarily a pass rush specialist with the 49ers. He's being asked to do something different here, and that is help shut down the run. Second and seven. It's Butts again pretty well on the right side. Leading the charge, Eugene Lockhart, the veteran, and he had some help from Jack Del Rio on the play. Yeah, Lockhart is the heart and soul of this defense. Last year, incredibly, he was involved in 222 tackles. And that's almost unheard of. That, that, of course, a new record. 154 solos, and he assisted on 68 others. That time, as you can see, he got plenty of help from a lot of the other Cowboys. He's only the fourth player ever to play middle linebacker for the Cowboys. Jerry Tubbs, Leroy Jordan and Bob Brunick, the other three. Some pretty good ones. Lockhart and all pro last year as well. Atlantic facing another third down situation. Third and six. Walter Wilson in motion. To Ronnie Harmon out of the backfield. A nice move on Williams. And Harmon is with second effort close to the 15-yard line and another first down. And Jim, once again, a little stutter step on Robert Williams and it cost across the Cowboys yardage. Yeah, it did, and uh, Harmon was too, much too much open on the play, but watch the pass come right at us here. As you can see, Harmon coming out of the backfield, and the ball thrown nicely by Vlasic, and he puts the great move on Robert Williams right there. Ah, that's what you practice mm. at. And the Cowboys, probably more than any other team, practice full speed tackling, and that's one of the complaints of some of the new guys who come over here. Hey, you hit too much. Maybe not enough for Robert Williams. 16-yard pickup, Ronnie Harmon, a plan B acquisition during the offseason from Buffalo. And on first and 10, inside handoff to Marion Butts. Near the 10-yard line, Ken Norton on the hit. You know, Butts is a great story for the uh, Chargers. A uh, uh, find. This is a pre-Bobby Beathard find. A middle-round draft choice out of Florida State. As a senior, carried the ball only 29 times. He was blocking for a guy named Sammy Smith down there. A special teams guy, a captain of the special teams. That's why they liked him. He came in here last year and ran the ball, ran the ball. As the season went on, he just got better and better. Nine rushing touchdowns last season for Marion Butts. Second and four. Butts, not this time, the Tasmanian Devil. Dean Hamill wrapped him up around the ankles. You know, Hamill has come through for the Cowboys. There's a guy they picked up last year in a trade with the Washington Redskins. Almost unheard of. To, to trade with a team within your division. And it hasn't happened much before with the Cowboys and the Redskins. That's just a great play by the defensive tackle. He is a Bobby Beathard find. He's coming back to hunt Beathard because when Beathard was with the Redskins, he made uh, Hamill a 12th round draft pick out of Tulsa and the Tasmanian Devil with the play right there. That feels good for a player. The season has officially started for him. He's made a big hit. Chargers are trying to hit on third and seven from the 14. Clock running, 439 to play in the quarter. across the goal line. <laughs> Greg McEwen, the, the most blue-collar of blue-collar players maybe in the NFL. The guy doesn't have a lot of speed. He's not real big. And what's he do? He makes two guys miss right there. Was it Robert Williams on that coverage again? May have been. Incredible. McEwen, who's used basically as a blocker in running situations, came out of the backfield, and you know he's a happy man. <laughs> he's happy to be here. <laughs> then he scores a touchdown. Fouad Revez to attempt the extra point. The Cow first time in 14 years the Cowboys have not sold out for a season opener. 
about 42,000 on hand at Texas Stadium as Fuad Rivez gets ready to kick it away. Rivez kicked for the Miami Dolphins. Last year didn't hook on with a club. Came back and hooked on with the Chargers this season. And it's James Dixon two yards deep in the end zone. He stumbles and falls. And the Cowboys will start from inside their own 15-yard line. Let's look back at the touchdown. Yeah, Craig McEwen calls himself Mr. Generic. Mr. Generic was very, very excited after making the touchdown catch. And there's a flag on the play on the field. We'll keep an eye on that for you. It was Troy Aikman marches out for the Cowboys. Our referee is Jim Tunney. Illegal use of hands on the Cowboys. Holding 57 during the kick. Half the distance to the goal line, first down. First flag of the game. Here's that touchdown. Yeah, McEwen, you see him in motion coming out of the backfield. He's in the flat again, Vlasic with the pass where it has to be, which is, you know, something you got to do. And again, Robert Williams with the missed tackle. So Ron Francis was completely out of position, anticipating that his teammate would uh, slow down the ball carrier, but he didn't. And then McEwen with that enthusiasm, diving his way into the end zone. There's one happy charger. Cowboys first and ten starting way in the hole in their own six. That's Johnston in motion and the give goes to Timmy Smith. Hello and welcome to the regular season. Boom. He was drilled. Now here are some finals and some games that are wrapping up from early. The Bears shutting out Seattle. Green Bay beating up on an injury plague Ram Club. And Kansas City off strongly. A field goal beating the Minnesota Vikings. What about that run and shoot? It was a pop gun today. Tampa Bay beat Detroit. Washington, no problems. Joe Bugle having trouble against his former club. And in the first quarter, Pittsburgh and Cleveland are scoreless. Second and seven. Aikman going long for McKinnon. Gil Bird running with him step for step. And there is a marker on the play. The veteran Gil Bird had him all the way down the field. Gil Bird is uh, hoping to do something good today. He was telling us yesterday that his son, Gil II, is six years old today. So happy birthday to Gil II. Now he told us what he wants to give his son is an interception for his birthday. Billy to the hand, number 44, defense, five yards and first down, first down. I think what his son would probably rather have is an extra quarter tacked onto his allowance rather than the interception. <laughs> <laughs> All right, game's in progress now. Denver and the Raiders at the Coliseum in Los Angeles just underway. Atlanta jumping out ahead of Houston. Jerry Glanville against his old club. Jets in Cincinnati. Bruce Coslett coaching the Jets now. No score there. Buffalo leading and Miami leading New England. All right, the Cowboys pick up a first down, so it's first and 10 from the 14. Smith again, nothing doing. Now let me mention that Johnston is in the ball game. Tommy Agee, who you saw hobble off earlier, has a sprained left knee. He'll be taped, and then it will be determined if he is going to return. You're looking at number 50, Gary Plummer, one of the hardest hitters in the league. In on a lot of tackles for the Chargers, number 55, Junior Seau, their first round draft pick, who was a holdout for most of the camp. That's a lot of talent down there in the field for the Charger defense. Well, the Chargers basically, after being an offensive club for so many years, took all their draft picks and reconstructed their entire defense. Good point. Second and ten. Three minutes to play in the first quarter. We're tied at seven at Texas Stadium. A lot of time for Aikman. And that pass is picked off. No, they say it hit the turf. Vincy Glenn did a fine job. It looked like, from our angle, that he'd hold it in. We'll take another look, and it apparently bounced. And the thing to look at here is that the amount of time Aikman has to throw. When the Chargers go to that straight four-man rush, they're not putting enough pressure on the quarterback. Vincy Glenn right there, one of the solid performers in that secondary. And Aikman, again, with plenty of time, probably wasn't the, the best place to throw the ball. I guess he was just feeling he was running out of time, and, of course, the ball did hit the ground. Well, Betsy Glenn not making the catch. That was a tough angle. He didn't protest, though. Didn't protest a bit. Maybe he should have. <laughs> Third and ten. Aikman working out of the shotgun. First time this afternoon. He wants the tight end, Novacek. Novacek had to go down and pick up the ball, but now gets first down yardage. 
Now that is just good effort by Jay Novacek who had to reach down to haul the pass in, kept his balance and picked up the first down. Something he's done for years and years. Aikman is really running the show here so well and that's what they're looking for. The Cowboys want him to be more assertive. Here it is again. Grossman with the great pressure of the ball coming right at us and Novacek getting down there. That's so hard for a receiver to do. And again it threw the tacklers off. He took a big shot there at the end from Martin Bayless, but held on to the ball. 11-yard pickup, first and 10 Dallas, two minutes to play in the first quarter. Cowboys on their own 25. Second-year man out of UCLA, Troy Aikman, running the Cowboy offense. It's Smith. Nothing going there. Bert Grossman wrapping him up and dropping him, along with Junior Seau. And Big Lee Williams on the hit. Now one thing this Charger defense does so well is pursue. They're often strong at the point of attack, but watch the backside here. Leslie O'Neill, number 91. He is almost in on that play. Along with, there comes Lee. Incredible amount of pursuit. Billy Ray Smith at the point of attack, number 54, Sammy Seal holding their own. That makes that possible. What they have to look out for is Troy Aikman on a keeper. On a bootleg, a blind bootleg, and there's Jimmy Johnson thinking, hey, we tried it in uh, preseason against the Chargers and it worked, and we tried it again here. A minute 20 to play in the quarter, second and 10 from the 25. Johnston. Daryl Johnston, an intelligent ball player. He's big, he's strong, he's tough. Second round pick in 89 out of Syracuse, and Junior Seo on the stop. <laughs> Junior's so happy to be out there. He had one of those nasty long contract things where he was asking for what he said at the beginning, something ridiculous, and the Chargers were offering something ridiculous in return. Wait a minute, I've never heard a player say that they've asked for something ridiculous. And that's, it was so refreshing to talk to Junior, and he's still that way. And he has such great enthusiasm. He's a young kid, only played two years at SC. He sat out his freshman year. And, uh, you know, Junior, he's happy to be here. He's playing in his hometown of, of San Diego for the Chargers. 35 seconds to play in the quarter. Third and nine for the Cowboys. Three wide receivers in the game. James Dixon has checked in. A lot of time for Aikman. And the pass is in and out of the hands of Dixon incomplete. Would have had a first down. That time, the Chargers put some pressure on Aikman. They're away from that basic four-man front. You can see Grossman again rushing from the outside. He's so quick, he's so fast, getting pushed out of the way there that time. But on the backside, Leslie O'Neill, and that's what those guys like to do. They like to pinch from the outside. Mike Saxon makes his first appearance of the afternoon. He'll punt the ball away from his own 11-yard line. And back deep for the Chargers, Jerry Mays, 5'7", 176, a free agent out of Georgia Tech. An exciting young player. Good kick by Saxon. Drive Mays back to the 24-yard line. He's going right up the gut, and Mays carries it to the 42 before he is stopped. Hang time, 4.67 seconds. A 50-yard punt, an 18-yard return. will return to Texas Stadium. Under the boots. Fred, great job sniffing that out. Well, you are a journalist. It's my life. It's your middle name. It's my life. Classic to Anthony Miller. And that'll be the final play of the first quarter. Well, the Cowboys had one long drive for a 10. One of our new innovations this year. That's right. As you can see the uh, last trader. This is the favorite play for the Chargers. They like to run Marion Butts by pulling the backside guard and the backside tackle. Everybody here blocks down, and the pressure here is on the strong safety and the linebacker to stack it up. If he gets ahead of steam going that way, look out. Okay, and I'll just go like this. Three X's, <laughs> and you win. You cheated. There you go. On second and two from midfield, Bernstein, and there's a face mask in there. Good they call, Fred. Grabbed a hold of his cage. That's going to cost him. Question is, will it cost five or more yards? I think it's going to be five. It wasn't intentional. Of course, I'm not down there officiating. <laughs> and to illustrate that point, the penalty is against the Chargers. <laughs> 65 <laughs> offense, 10 yards. It'll still be second down. All right, let's take a look at it and see. Yeah, holding penalty on David Richards, the right guard, and it's tough to pick him out right there. But he's blocking on, well, he's actually holding <laughs> on Dean Hamill. You can see him right there in the freeze number 78. So there, Fred. 
go back to officiating school. So Hamill was held and then grabbed Bernstein's face mask. He got away with one. Second and 12. Trying to set up the screen. Butts has the ball. Nice open field tackle by the veteran on that defensive unit, 77, Jim Jeffco. When he broke in, he looked one way and he saw the likes of John Dutton. He saw Ed Two Tall Jones. He saw Randy White and he said, I'm in Nirvana. I'm with a bunch of great players. Now he looks to the other side and he says, I'm the old pro working with the rookies. First quarter stats, yards passing. The uh, Cowboys have the edge. As Aikman came out, he was so sharp early, made such a big difference. The rushing yards are a surprise for the Chargers. Only eight, of course, the Cowboys with seven. Both these teams want to run the ball more effectively. Third and 12. Ball on the 40-yard line. Win early in motion. Deep drop for Vlasic. Cowboys, the first big turnover of the game. Isaac Colt, one of the guys who came over in the trade last year with the Minnesota Vikings that sent Herschel Walker up there. Vlasic trying the deep out pattern. That gives the cornerback a lot of time to recover, and he recover he did, making the catch. Holt's a big guy for a cornerback. He's 6'2", weighs a little bit over 200 pounds. Sometimes it's hard for those guys to break quickly off the cut, but not Holt. He's a solid defender out there. Making his first start with the Dallas Cowboys, Isaac Holt intercepts. And we should for a moment focus on Mark Vlasic here because Vlasic could be in a situation, Dan Henning told us, if he does not move the ball club, Henning would not hesitate to make a change of quarterback. He has made that clear from the very start that he thinks Billy Joe Tolliver. First and 10 from the 42. AG is back in the ball game. Cowboy trying to capitalize. He wants Kelvin Martin. And threw it out two to play in the half. We're tied at seven. The Cowboys are moving from the 42. Fake the screen one way and then goes out to AG on the right side. He has a blocker. He's inside the 30 yard line for a Cowboy first down. Junior Sale on the hit. Yeah, great effort by Seau to get over there and make the hit, but when you analyze this play, A.G. was open because of the great footwork and the, the faking ability of Troy Aikman at quarterback. Here's a play against a hard-rushing team that can work. That pump fake threw Lee Williams off, then he turned around and, and looked back, and look at the good blocking he gets initially. Good job by Billy Ray Smith. He was held, and here's Seau, number 55. The guy is very quick, he's very fast. And it's obvious he wants to be very involved in making some tackles. 34, Tommy Agee, who was hobbled, then came back on the field, making the first start of his NFL career today. And on first and 10, it is play action for Aikman, and a lot of room around the right side. Aikman near another first down. That play action froze the linebackers. You know, last year, Aikman was the second leading rusher for the Cowboys. That's not the situation they want to have repeated this year. But in a situation like that, they'll take it. He has the sidelines. He can run out of bounds. And it also shows that, I think to his teammates, that he's willing to, to pick up the yards when he has to. Last year, he was more concerned with executing the offense. This year, he's more concerned with leading this ball club. I think last year, he was more concerned with survival. <laughs> <laughs> That's his numbers for today. Impressive, considering we're just underway in the second quarter. Second and fourth for the 23. It's A.G. Can he get around the right side? He's got a first down. He's inside the 15. A.G. playing like a man possessed. He led the running backs in rushing, catches, and receiving yardage in the preseason. Yeah, but career in the NFL to this point, he's still limping. You know, he's still a little nicked up from early in the game. Career to this point, look at A.G., look at the moves here. He gets some good blocking, some good holding up front. He avoids Leslie O'Neal and then makes a nice move here but can't get away from Gil Bird. Career to this point, into, coming into this game, he had two NFL carries for a total of five yards. He's not coming out. You're going to have to drag him out of the ball game. From the 13, it's first and 10. The wide receivers to the near side of the field. Quick try. It's A.G. to the 10-yard line. Junior Seau on the hit once again. Tommy Agee, six feet, 218 pounds, in his third year out of Auburn, he was a plan B player from Kansas City. Third year in the league, and it's the third time, well, second time he's been a plan B. And uh, Bo knows Agee, because Agee blocked for Bo at Auburn. Mm. Bo Jackson. 
Cowboys have a number of plan B's on their ball club. Seven made the team, one injured reserve. They have one on a three-week suspension. Seven were cut. They signed 16, most in the NFL. Trying to rebuild here in Dallas after a disastrous 1-15 season. And here is Aikman trying to get them into the end zone, but the ball is thrown right to Billy Ray Smith. There is a penalty flag, so we'll have to see what that concerns. But Billy Ray Smith was wide open. Why not throw to him? Oh, wrong team. Yeah, you know, it's funny. The guy, he was probably trying to throw it away, just didn't get Holding it. Holding offense, 68, the decline. Cuts back, interception in the end zone. First down. So Billy Ray Smith comes up with a big play for the Charger defense. After the turnover, it's Rod Bernstein moving up the middle on first and 10 for the Chargers. That's a huge play for the Charger defense, the interception, because the Cowboys had second and seven from the 10 yard line. So if you throw the ball away, you still get another crack for the first down. At the very least, you come away with a field goal. And let's remember something Jimmy Johnson told us yesterday about his Cowboys. They have to be patient, especially in the first half. Don't force it. They can lose the game in the first half if they're not patient, but if they are patient, they can win it in the second half. And that is something he pointed out to us yesterday. Clock running, 10-10 to play here in the first half. Second and four from the 26, Classic Completes the pass to McEwen. And he is near first down yardage. Isaac Holt defensively for the Cowboys. So Vlasic feels better. He threw an interception the last drive. He comes out now, completes a pass on a bit of an out pattern. Similar type play to the one that was picked off. Not exactly, but the same type of a pass. Let's talk about Vlasic for a moment. Had a very serious knee injury against the Rams, I believe, in November of 88. Took 22 months for him to rehabilitate that knee, and now he is back. Yeah, terrific job last year of, of just not sitting around. When he was rehabbing, he was paying attention. He was learning. He was visualizing. Spent a lot of time with Dan Henning and really learned the system. Here's Plastic. He wants Miller. He couldn't grab it. Now, you talked about Vlasic at quarterback. What about the men in front of them? There have been so many changes on this Charger offensive line. You have to wonder if he is in danger. This is the way they look today. Yes, and uh, Courtney Hall making his first start at left guard. Frank Cornish, the rookie from UCLA. Eric Floyd, he was cut twice before by the Chargers. Here's what the line looked like last year. Joel Patton, he's still on the team, but he's hurt, injured reserve. Thompson's now the starting right tackle. Richards is the only guy who stays in place here, the right guard. He's been there for three years now. Second and ten. yardage up the middle. Talking more about that offensive line, we chatted with Dan Henning yesterday and I said, Coach, it must be very difficult for you to rebuild an entire offensive line and he says, I'm not rebuilding anything. There's no foundation here to build on. Yeah. First, you have to have the foundation, then you can start to build. So despite the fact they've changed their entire offensive line before the first game, he doesn't think it's that much of a problem. Well, he and Bobby Beathard both said it wasn't that tough a decision. The older guys we had in there, McKnight and Larry Williams this summer trying to play left guard, just weren't getting the job done. Vlasic will try to get it done on third and seven. Vlasic, eight of 11 for 68 yards. Incomplete. He wanted the rookie, Walter Wilson. Yeah, Wilson's a rookie, but you see he's, he's learned that NFL technique already. When you miss a pass, you point at the defender. <laughs> Say, that was pass interference. <laughs> see these rookies, they can't watch a lot of television. Let's take a look now at the offensive line play of the Chargers here. That's Broderick Thompson, number 76. He's protecting up front. You can see the Cowboys, they're flying after Vlasic. These guys are very, very intense out there. They think that's their opportunity, and that is to gang up on that offensive line of the Chargers. John Kidd in punt formation for the Chargers. His first attempt of the day, signed as a plan B player for Buffalo. Rod Harris is deep for the Cowboys. Harris on the run. Didn't call for a fair catch, and he was hit immediately by Donald Frank. So with eight minutes and 29 seconds. Yeah, that's something that Sid Brooks, the equipment man, thought of. Dallas moving first and 10. Aikman with nobody to throw it to, tucked it up and took the loss. Bert Grossman forced the action there. The Cowboys don't have any ice on their side of the field, though. Yeah, Sid was telling me that he has done this always when he's gone someplace hot and humid as it is here today. Temperature 92 degrees, humidity, you can slice it, right, Fred? No ice on their side of the field. And uh, so Sid Brooks thinks it's a real advantage. He was disappointed. He won 100 block, hundred pound blocks of ice, could only find 50 pound blocks, so he ordered twice as many. Smart guy, and he wasn't a math major, but he figured that out. <laughs> so the, the Chargers at least staying cool on the sideline. 
And the Cowboys are moving second and ten from the 27. Eight minutes to play in the half. A.G. Stuck pretty good at the 30. Martin Bayless in to drill him, along with Gary Plummer. Late game's in progress. Denver still leading the Raiders. Atlanta way ahead of Houston, 21-0. You think Jerry Glanville is having glee over that? Cincinnati has jumped out ahead of the Jets. Bills and Colts are tied. Patriots by a point over Miami and still scoreless. Pittsburgh and Cleveland. You know, getting back to that Atlanta-Houston score, the last professional job Jack Pardee had in the NFL was defensive coordinator for the Chargers in 81, and it wasn't a su very successful year. Third and seven. Aikman having to run. There's a marker on the play. Aikman dives forward close to a first down, but again, there is a marker on the play. That's a terrible sign. If, 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 if an offensive line coach is watching, he has five guys in white jerseys watching their quarterback scramble and five guys in blue jerseys chasing the quarterback. And on top of it, there's a holding penalty on the play. Troy Aikman, obviously not a very happy man. Not only did he get rushed, chased, had to run for his life, now he has to do it again. Yeah, and his last completion was to Billy Ray Smith on the other team. <laughs> So I think that, that they're going to try either a draw play or a screen play. So defensively in that huddle, that has to be what they're talking about. Uh, Aikman, I don't think, wants to drop back six or seven yards and look downfield in this field position because a sack would really put him in a bind. But now they're in a shotgun, so who knows? Three wide receivers in the game for the Cowboys. Chargers in their nickel defense on third and 17. Here comes Lee Williams. Aikman running for his life and just dumped it. Jim Tunney has thrown a flag. We may have grounding. That's exactly what we have. Now, it looked like from this position, Daryl Johnston was in the vicinity of the pass. Jim Tunney disagrees. Yeah, but you can't, when you're under pressure like that, just throw the ball down into the ground. That's a judgment call on Tunney's part, the official's part. Again, that's why I said try a screen or try a draw play. You had the guy backing up 10 yards, the, the hot pursuit by the, the, the Chargers. Potential grounding, number eight. Threw the ball on the ground. Ten yards. It's fourth down. Penalty is accepted at the spot of the pass. Spot of the pass. Take a look here. Immediate pressure up the middle. And that's the type of defense you can run different plays on. Lee Williams, what a great athlete he is. You know, he, he likes rushing from the outside. They asked him to rush from the inside. And that's clearly, in my opinion, uh, gr uh, intentional grounding. And, you know, Lee Williams accepted the job of rushing from the inside. Mike Saxon back in punt formation. But we have a stoppage of, of play on the field. <laughs> so Saxon back for his second punt of the game. And now the Cowboys will be flagged. Please reset the clock, 25 seconds. Please reset the clock, 25 seconds. You notice Jim there looking a little bit like the Statue of Liberty back in the end zone, hand pointed towards the clock. The, 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 the officials are getting so much more style. You know, they're, they're so much more microphone conscious. He is actually the man they patterned all the signals after. He's the man in the rule book. Yeah, in the program. Shanked it. Another marker on the field. And Mays is inside the 40. Keep in mind, we have another flag. Yeah, this could be a big nine. 635 to play in the half. Marion Butts left side, staying on his feet. And Marion Butts is a tough runner. He has a good low center of gravity. He's big, he's strong, and he just keeps moving forward. Yeah, important play for the Charger offense right here because a big pickup on the ground on first down is something Dan Henning wanted to do. And uh, Buttsy, as they call him, uh, picking up a lot of that on his own. And that's something that the Cowboys told us they were afraid of. They said, you know, it's tough to bring Butts down. He's like Christian Okoya, a little bit smaller version, but just as tough to bring down. Talk about a tank, 6'1", 248. Tough to get out of the way of that. Second and three from the 42. That's Miller in motion. Play action. Classic. He wants Miller deep. And it's batted away and intercepted. But there's a marker in the end zone. And 
Vlasic was leveled after he threw that pass, threw it just about on the money. Anthony Miller, though, he really draws a crowd. Isaac Holt batted the ball away. James Washington grabbed it, but there's a marker in the end zone. You can hear the crowd reaction. The officials sitting down don't agree. Pass interference. Defense in the end zone. One yard line, first down. Big play. Isaac Holt, not a happy man. Yeah, Isaac Holt under a lot of pressure covering a guy like Anthony Miller. Look at the hit that Vlasic takes. He knows it's coming too, but he puts the ball up there and considering that is a terrific throw. Now here, is there contact before the ball gets there? Boy, it's tough to see from that angle. But maybe they're saying his right hand. Boy, it is difficult to say. Looks like he's just playing the football right there. From the one yard line, Marion Butts converts it. The Chargers have the lead. Boy, easy to understand why these Cowboy fans are unhappy. That was a very questionable pass interference call on the Cowboys that got the ball down to the one yard line. But you see Marion Butts happy. He's in the end zone for the first time, as Fred said earlier, nine touchdowns on the ground last year. And Dan Henning has something his team hasn't had much of it in his regime here in San Diego, a lead. Juan Reves on for the extra point. Out of the hold of the punter, John Kidd. Well, then Keystone Light, bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? and by Castrol GTX, engineered for today's smaller cars. Back at Texas Stadium, five minutes, 43 seconds to play in the first half. The Chargers have now taken a 14 to seven lead over the Dallas Cowboys, Fred Rogan and Jim Laslevic. And Quad Reves getting ready to boot it away to James Dixon at the top of the screen and Alexander Wright at the bottom. Reves. To Dixon, a yard deep. He'll try the near side of the field. Ooh. Good hit on the play. Number 90, Richard Brown crunching him. The Cowboys will start first and 10 from their 18-yard line. Well, Richard is fired up, too, isn't he? Great special teams performer last year with the L.A. Rams, a Plan B free agent who came in and caught everybody's attention. Here's where Troy Aikman really has to take control of the Cowboy offense. They got a, they got a bit of a bum deal with that uh, play, but we'll see if he can rally them and get them going. Number 22 in white, Emmett Smith, the Cowboys' first round draft pick in the lineup for the first time, and Smith touches the ball and moves up the middle to the 20-yard line. All right, we are set here. Emmett Smith in the ball game, top pick. Held out of camp, just signed last week, and he's already in the ball game. Daryl Johnson in motion on second and nine. Aikman going long for Martin. Knocked away by Sammy Seal. Yeah, and Martin saying, and you can hear the crowd saying it too. Wait a second. If what was happening earlier against the Chargers was pass interference, then what is this? Now here's the play here. Kelvin Martin has that speed to put pressure on Sammy Seal, and Sammy's playing the ball all the way. No interference whatsoever on the part of number 30 for the Chargers, Sammy Seal. Moments ago, this is what the crowd remembers. Now watch, it's difficult to see any contact before the ball gets there, but I will add, the official was right in front of the play with a perfect view. You have to assume he could see something that we can't from that angle. Even with the replay, the angle can fool you. And officiating is all a game of angles. If they're in the right position, 99% of the time, they make the right call. On 39, Aikman in trouble. Watch out. Fires it. He's got a completion to James Dixon. Yeah, but he had stepped out of bounds and came back and caught the ball because the official, the linesman over there, threw his hat down. So that pass isn't going to count. You know, so far, Jim, there have been no sacks in this ball game. And that's got to be a bit surprising. Out of bounds, came back in and caught the pass, loss of down. Oof. And it's got to be a bit surprising considering the fact that the Charger defensive line is so strong. So much pressure, though, on Aikman. He probably wishes at times he would have been sacked. He's been running a relay here all by himself. Mike Saxon in for the third time to punt. 
And Jerry Mays is back deep. Now his baton is that football. He's trying to pass it. He's not getting any help. For him, it's a long, long afternoon so far. Cowboys fourth and nine from the 20. And after that initial burst at the beginning of the ball game, their offense has stalled. High punt for Saxon. Mays calls for the fair catch. And hauls it in at the 43-yard line. First and 10, Marion Butts nearly breaks it. Marion Butts to the 40-yard line before he's finally stopped by James Washington. Yeah, that's what Butts can do to you. And uh, that time, Ken Norton, a good tackler, got a, a knee full, a face full of uh, Marion Butts. The one thing you don't want to do is get a knee full of Butts. All right, Denver leading the Raiders 6-0 in the second. <laughs> Atlanta has increased its lead over Houston to 24-0. Jets, 7-3 over the Bengals. And as we wrap it up, Buffalo has now jumped out to a 10-point lead on Indianapolis. New England, way ahead of Miami. Pittsburgh, Cleveland, still no score. And remember, NFL Live at halftime. Scores and highlights from all around the league. It's Butts again, trying the left side this time for three. And that Cowboy front that time shutting down one of the favorite plays for the Chargers, running it back to the left. Again, the Chargers like to run the ball to the right. And on the stop, 55, Jack Del Rio. When he was growing up, he basically grew up without a mom. His dad raised four sons, and he was the eldest of the four sons. He would get up in the morning every day, and it, it, it's his responsibility to make breakfast for the other boys. They started calling him Mr. Mom. Wow. So if you want football or pancakes, call Jack Del Rio. <laughs> There's movement, there's a flag. It's running, we are under three minutes to play in the first half. Chargers second and four from the 33. Caravello in motion. It's Butts, picks up the block of Caravello and he has another Charger first down. They're just starting to ground it out. That's the way they wanted to do it. That takes the pressure off Mark Vlasic. He just doesn't have to come up with a great plays through the air. And But this is a kind of situation where they'll maybe try to catch the Cowboys off guard. They've run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, had some success, gotten help from that penalty. And uh, maybe this time they'll fake it to Marion Butts and try to look downfield on a first down. Well, when you've got a guy like Caravello in the ball game, it's as if you have another tight end. He is that big and that strong. It's like having another guard. He's that big and that strong. The book on Marion Butts, 11 carries, 44 yards. First and 10 from the 27. McEwen in motion, and there's the pass. Miller ooh, dropped at the 22-yard line. And that brings us to the two-minute warning. And we're yellow because of practice now to distinguish between the offensive and defensive players. There you go. Back live now, it's Vlasic. Completes the pass to McEwen, and McEwen is dropped at the 16-yard line. Keep in mind, both teams still have three timeouts. And Mr. Generic doing a good job right there. Again, that's his name for himself, McEwen. He says, hey, I'm not real fast. I'm not real strong. Just give me a chance, especially like he likes the ball over the middle. This time, his reception's coming on the outside. All right, clock running, a minute 33 to play. Charges are first and 10, and the ball is spotted at the 15-yard line. It's Marion Butts and a marker on the play. That'll stop the clock. Danny Noonan and Jim Jeffcoat combining on the hit. That hurts if you're San Diego. It certainly does. It's kind of break the Cowboys' need, and now it's the kind of break the Cowboys have to capitalize on. Holding. Offense number 63. It'll still be first down. Well, with Fouad. First and 20, the ball on the 25-yard line. 14-7, San Diego leading Dallas, a minute 22 to play in the half. But check it is Ronnie Harmon. And Harmon is inside the 20. So I believe it's the 17. Ron Francis on the hit. Clock continues to run, and both teams still have their timeouts. Now take a look at this play. The, the two guards on the back side away from the ball, the guard and tackle, they pulled and they created that hole. That's the play I diagrammed earlier. This is run out of a little different formation, the passing formation, but again, a favorite play of the Chargers. They'll go to it when they can. 45 seconds left in the half. Second and 12, Lassick. He's got Harmon, and there goes Harmon. Manny Hendricks. 
Edwards grabbed him and bulldogged him out of bounds. Vlasic calls the Chargers first time out of the half. That well, but they're in a situation here where, of course, Vlasic's going to have to look downfield with a third and eight situation with 37 seconds left in the half. Chargers three of five on third down conversions this afternoon. Vlasic looking for the end zone. Knocked away. Ron Francis was back there to bat the ball away from Walter Wilson. Yeah, great job of defense by those two guys right there. And again, that play took so long to develop that they had a real opportunity to recover and get in position to knock the ball down. They have Vlasic, not much pressure, and the Cowboys have not pressured him all that much. And you can see the pass nicely thrown, but again, the play took so long to develop that those guys could recover and get there. Also back, Vince Albritton defensively for the Cowboys. Levez is on for his first field goal attempt of the afternoon. 23 yards out of the hold of Kidd. He shanked it. DC. 27 seconds to play in the half. The Cowboys dodged the bullet, trailing 14 to 7, starting first and 10 from the 20 yard line. Johnston trying to get around the right side, the operative term, trying. Yeah, time's ticking down here in the first half. Some of the fans want the uh, Cowboys to go for it and air the ball out, but they're facing the rush that Aikman has faced. I think this is the smartest thing to do. And anyway, confidence builder, they go in without giving up any points in that last drive by San Diego. Well, both teams have had their chances in this first half, but more often than not, they've given the ball away. And there's a lot of running room. Fumble now, loose ball. Nate Lewis grabbed the ball, ran it upfield. He was hit. It popped free, and the Cowboys have come up with the ball. The man with the recovery, number 57, Vincent Smith. And you can see giving the ball to Jimmy Johnson. Big break. The Cowboys have just now grabbed momentum. There's Bill Bates down there early. He was no factor in the play, though. The tackle from behind jarred the ball free. And boy, for a while, the Chargers just didn't realize where that ball was. That's the tip drill right there coming into play. And Vincent Smith in the right place at the right time. So Dallas trying to capitalize on a Charger turnover to start the second half. Moves first and 10 from the 41. AG in motion. And Aikman goes right upstairs. Well, attempts to anyway. Yeah, I think he realized that play was going nowhere. And so Aikman did the smart thing this time and threw the ball into the ground. Remember back in the first half, first quarter, he threw the ball. Apparently, uh, uh, somebody had broken off their pattern and went right to Billy Ray Smith in the end zone, the lone interception he has thrown so far. So that was a smart play by the young quarterback. After struggling last season, Aikman told us yesterday that he did a lot of soul searching in the offseason. Yeah, one of the people he confided in was his agent, Lee Steinberg, who's handled a lot of quarterbacks, Warren Moon, Steve Bartkowski. He said that uh, Lee was through a lot with Bartkowski, and that helped him a little bit. Second and 10 from the 41. Deep drop. And he underthrows the receiver. Going for Dennis McKinnon, Sam Seal had him defensively. Yeah, Sammy Seal has been under pressure a little bit this game, but he's held up quite well. There's the backup, Steve Walsh, and he is going to be the backup because Jimmy Johnson has made it clear Troy Aikman is the starting quarterback. It is easy to look at two outstanding young quarterbacks and say Walsh should be playing and Aikman should not be, and if Jimmy Johnson was not definitive in what he decided, there could be problems. The one win last year for the Cowboys, Walsh was the starting quarterback, a 13-3 win at Washington. Aikman facing third and 10. We're just underway in the second half. Moving from the 41-yard line. Three wide receivers in the game. Instead, they go to the quick draw to A.G. He's to the 35-yard line, but well short of the first down. Lee Williams on the stop for the Chargers. Well, what a horse Lee Williams is. Interesting decision here. Fourth down. Now, a lot of teams call this the four down area. Lee Williams, yeah, he's the heart of that defense. Big guy. And again, he made the sacrifice when it was necessary. Moved back into to a tackle position instead of staying out there at the left end where, of course, he could rush the passer and, and try to rack up the sack. So fourth down and the Cowboys spread have decided to go for it. All right, they're moving from their 35. It's fourth and four. Jimmy Johnson trying to get something going here to start the second half. Aikman has time and he has incomplete. 
He had the first down, but the ball was knocked away by Vincey Glenn. Dennis McKinnon appeared to have it, but Vincey Glenn knocked it away, and the Chargers will take over. I like the call. I like going for it in a situation like this. So the Cowboys fail to capitalize on the turnover. It'll be and back here at Texas Stadium, the Cowboys tasting the opportunity to capitalize on that turnover, but gave the ball away. And it'll be Mark Vlasic and the San Diego Chargers now working first and 10 from their 35-yard line. Marion butts up to the 45. Just that quick 10 yards, Eugene Lockhart and James Washington on the stop. He had a terrific game last year against Kansas City. Carried the ball 39 times for 176 yards. And the back he's compared to, as I said in the first half, Christian Okoya in that game only rushed for 60 against the Chargers. Well, what the Chargers want to do offensively is give the ball to Butts, have the defense converge, and then open it up quickly to Anthony Miller. That's right. Only gave him a pickup of nine and second and a yard. Caravello in motion. Picking up the first down and getting caught pretty good. Again, Eugene Lockhart on the stop, and he picked up some help from Vince Albritton, number 36, who, by the way, went to high school with MC Hammer. Is that right? Vince Albritton also has the moves. Can't touch this. Vince Albritton and MC Hammer. They call him Hammer, as a matter of fact, because he went to high school with him. Just kind of an MTV note I'd like to throw in every once in a while. Kind of a get down guy, huh, Jim? Yeah. I'm not a big MC Hammer fan. You're losing me in this, Fred. <laughs> I'll try to hang on. First and 10 from the 48. It's Rock Bernstein coming out of the backfield. You can hear that pop up here, Dean Hamill. Yeah, Bernstein's thinking, wait a second, you block for Marion Butts, I get the ball, and I get creamed by Hamill, and I get creamed by Noonan, and all the Cowboys. Just listen to the audio here now. See if you can hear the pop down on the field. Check it out. I love it. It's <laughs> a thing of beauty. Now, oh. now that you're up here. <laughs> what a great time of year. <laughs> Beautiful sounds in the air. Wow. And to the phone, the bells are ringing down there. On second and 11. A lot of time. And right through the hands of Walter Wilson. Wilson, the rookie out of East Carolina, turning his head a little too soon before he had the ball. And you know, Vlasic had so much time, he really didn't want to go to Walter Wilson on that play. And I'm sure, you know, most receivers have this clock ticking in their head when they know, okay, I've been in this zone for a long time. The ball's not coming. It's not coming. I know who is coming, the defender. Here comes the ball. You get distracted when that happens. And Wilson, being the rookie, better learn not to get distracted. Third and 11 from the 47. Classic went for Miller. Good defensive play. It's Isaac Holt, the man who was called for interference in the end zone before, knocking it away. That was a terrific play by Holt. He kept his right arm off of it, brought his body around, and, and knocked down the pass. That's a big league play by Holt. And again, he's probably thinking, hey, no, no penalty here. Should have been no penalty the last time. You see Vlasic with a good, crisp pass. But Holt comes around. And the key on this play, again, is he kept that right arm away from the receiver. So there's no chance of him interfering at all with that guy. Good effort by Holt. John Kidd in punt formation. It's second punt of the day, standing back on his 32-yard line. And it's Rod Harris deep for the Cowboys. Nice kick. Harris called for the fair catch. It makes the play at the 14-yard line. So with 11 minutes and 33 seconds to play in the third quarter, the Cowboys will have the ball first and 10, and they will attempt to get back in this game and tie it up. Starting first and 10 from his 14, but that tells the story. He has not connected on six of his last pass attempts. On this particular play, he keeps it on the ground, and the give to Timmy Smith. You know, they wasted an opportunity with the great field position the first time they had the ball this half, and now here they are back in what has become very familiar territory with their backs to their own goal line. Jim, let me ask you, because the Charger defense is so strong, and especially that defensive line, are they starting just to beat and pound on the Cowboy offensive line and start to control the line of scrimmage? Yeah, they are, and that's the key for them, to control that line of scrimmage. But they're getting frustrated. They want to get to that quarterback. They want to start registering some sacks. Second and seven from the 17. Clock running 10.55 to play in the third quarter. Once again, it's Smith 
trying the right side and picking up a few yards. Cowboys very conservative in this situation and understandably. Here comes Henry rolling in and there goes uh, Timmy Smith out for the Cowboys rolling in for the Chargers defense. Cowboys are two of six on third down conversions this afternoon. And Timmy Smith is a story. Last year nobody wanted him. This year the Cowboys gave him a chance. And he started today. He had that great Super Bowl against Denver when he was with the Washington Redskins. Rushed for 204 yards back in 87. Third and four for Aikman. Here comes Lee Williams. Aikman avoids the rush, but he won't avoid it again. The ball is on the ground. Henry Rowling with the hit after Williams let the quarterback slip away, but Rowling made sure and wrapped his arms, forced the fumble, but it was recovered by the Cowboys. You pointed out that on a third down situation like that, the Chargers were gonna bring Rowling and let him shoot and blitz. And Rowling just impressed them so much this summer. You know, he has a lot of experience, played with Tampa last year, but again, the initial pressure by Lee Williams, well, he's gonna be upset letting that one slip away. But Aikman's good at that. He's a big, strong quarterback, but no getting away from that. First sack of the game, and Saxon is forced to punt out of his own end zone again. He's seven yards deep. It's Jerry Mays standing back at his 46. The Cowboys didn't get the playoff. Ran out of time. And there's not much farther back you can go. Unless you kick from the parking lot. <laughs> You learn a lot about your punter in situations like this. Delay half the distance to the goal line, eight yards to the four-yard line, still fourth down. It's his responsibility to count the men on the field. Is that correct? Yes, it is. The guy in front of him, too, the halfback in that situation, they call him the personal protector. It's nice. I always wanted a personal protector when I played, but linebackers don't get personal protectors. Saxon will try it again. Watch his back foot. Make sure he didn't step on that line. Got the kick away. Mays called for a fair catch at the 42-yard line. So the Chargers get the excellent field position, and Vlasic, of course, will try to cash in at the end of the first half. Caravello in motion. Here comes Jeff Coat. It's a screen. Oh, he almost threw it to his lineman. Yeah, the man he wanted to get the ball to was Rod Bernstein. And unfortunately, Eric Floyd turned around and it was almost, look what I found. The last man you wanted to catch that ball was Eric Floyd. Now, Jim Jeffcoat has had such a terrific career, but it's been such a such, such a secret. Outside of Dallas, people don't know it. Over the past half dozen years, he has 61 and a half sacks. He's among the leaders over the past six years in sacks, but overshadowed because this team has not performed well. Had a but, fine career at Arizona State University. So look who's in there now, Marion Butts. Will the Chargers go back to the ground? Second and 10. You made the call, it's Butts. And I'll tell you, Ken Norton did a good job of wrapping him up or Butts would have gone for big yardage. Yeah, Ken Norton, you saw him play collegiately and you saw how this guy developed. His father, of course, the former heavyweight champ, Ken Norton, a little bit shaken up on this play. Looks like he might have a leg or ankle problem. Interesting, Norton was involved in some promotion for the ball club, setting things up. There he is. <laughs> That's uh, Jimmy Johnson, the head coach in the middle, Eugene Lockhart on the left. And that is the first time Ken Norton ever had boxing gloves on. And his dad was a former heavyweight champ. Incredible. On uh, third and six, Vlasic completes the pass. I think he's got the first down. The reception made by the rookie, Walter Wilson. And it's Ron Francis on the hit. Back to Ken Norton. You know, his dad a number of years ago was involved in a very serious automobile accident in Southern California. He was thrown from the car and he suffered some, some severe brain injuries. It is good to note that Ken Norton Sr., his dad, the former heavyweight champ of the world, is almost totally recovered now, feeling much better. I saw him at a benefit recently and he looked great and he's such a wonderful man, it's good to hear that. Ken Norton Sr. is such a popular man in Southern California. You know, a lot of San Diegans have adopted him too as their own because he trained there for a while. They came up a yard short, so now we have a fourth down and one. Fourth and one from the 33. Marion Butts, he didn't get it. Yeah. 
Dan Stubbs on that play, aided a little bit by the pressure by Hamill and the other guys in the middle of that defensive front. That's a huge play by the defense. The Cowboy crowd, I know, has been disappointed because this team hasn't won here for a long time. But it sure is excited because of the type of football they're playing. Even though they tried line, look like he's just suffering from cramps because they're massaging the leg area there. All right, first and 10, Dallas to the 35, Aikman. Over the middle, the pass is deflected and nearly intercepted. Aikman was popped pretty good on the play, and then three men downfield had a chance at the ball. Leslie O'Neill, though, delivered a great deal of pressure on Troy Aikman. And downfield, it was Vency Glenn, one of the big hitters out there for the Chargers. But the pressure was the key here. Leslie O'Neill, number 91. You see Burt Grossman, A.G. picking him up, but from the backside, too much pressure, Ooh. and then the big hit. We were talking to Troy yesterday, and I said, you have been hit a lot more in the pros than you ever were playing for UCLA. And he goes, sometimes I don't even know where I'm at. That time, Vency Glenn had the chance for the interception. He's wearing these fancy new gloves that have a little bit of stick and adhesive to them. Seven straight incompletions for Troy Aikman on second and ten. That way, and that's it. Forget about it. Jim Tunney says he's in the grasp before he can get hurt. Leslie O'Neill got him. Now let's check scores from around the league with the Hertz 10-minute ticker. Gentlemen, start your engines. Chicago knocking off Seattle. Green Bay over the Rams. It is Kansas City knocking off Minnesota on the Hertz 10-minute ticker. You see other scores. Washington pummeling Phoenix. Tampa Bay surprised Detroit. As we continue games in progress, Cleveland leading. The Raiders have come back to lead Denver. Atlanta leading Houston at the half. And that wraps up the rest of the scores. New England leading Miami by a point. Here it's third and 23. 7.15 to play in the quarter. Whistles on the play and a penalty marker dropped at the line of scrimmage. And again, a lot of pressure on Troy Aikman. Start, number 61, move before the snap. Third down, five yards. Back his quarterback, give him some time to throw the football. Chargers have two sacks for 25 yards. Third and 28. Chargers with five defensive backs. Aikman over the middle to Calvin Martin. He's got the ball, but he is short of the first down. Oh, the Chargers were playing prevent defense. Terrific job by Aikman. He did his part. He hung in, uh, in there in the face of another horrendous rush. He must have nightmares. It, it, the nightmares tonight are going to include number 91, Leslie O'Neill. Again, the big pressure from both sides as he and a couple of his teammates continue to harass Troy Aikman. 20-yard pickup. But still, eight short of the first down. A man who was getting a great deal of work in this afternoon, Mike Saxon, back on the punt for the Cowboys. And again, it's Jerry Mays, deep for the Chargers. Good punt. Drives Mays way back to the 13-yard line. Penalty flag on top of it. Bill Bates, special teams captain, down to put the lick on him. Great punt by Saxon. Well, that's a weapon when you have Lions, one of the real leaders on that special teams unit for the Cowboys. And the Chargers moving first and ten. They started from their nine-yard line, and not much on the side for Marion Butts. Now, every team needs a guy who's really going to get people fired up on special teams. And here you can see, as Mays tries to get something going on the return, nothing there, and Bates... And a couple of his teammates are down there to make the tackle. And watch Bates. He gets up. He's excited. This is a big turnaround play. He lets everybody know it. He's the veteran guy out there. Come on. Get in this ball game. On second and eight, a quick pop out to Quinn early, and he underthrew him. Back to Bill Bates for a moment. Busy guy at home. You can't imagine. He does what I call his daddy aerobics. And you can relate. You have <laughs> twins. I got two kids under the age of four. He has triplets. And they're 16 months old, two boys and a girl. He just found out a month or two ago that his wife is pregnant again. That's four kids. With that many kids, he's going to need a motel. <laughs> a base motel. I got it. See, I, I told you I'd follow along here. I'm doing a much better job. <laughs> <laughs> We've just received word that Dean Hamill... Cowboy defensive lineman has a tightened groin, but he will return to the ball game. And now on third and eight, inside gets the Ronnie Hartman and nothing going. And who's leading the charge? Bill Bates. There he is again, number 40, Mr. Enthusiasm. 
big series for the Cowboy defense. They've pinned the Chargers down here. Now they'll get the ball back in, in possibly great field position. This is what I wanted to point out before, Jim. What is the frustration level of the Cowboy defense continuously holding the Chargers and the offense unable to move the ball in for a score. What happens though defensively, you get your own world and that becomes our world is a happy place because we're stopping them. And so they feel fine. This could be a position where they might try to block it. They have some schemes in where they think they can put a lot of pressure on the punter. This might be one of those places. Rod Harris is deep for the Cowboys and John Kidd running out of his own end zone for San Diego. Wobbly kick, the fair catch called for and made by Harris. So be with us tonight on NBC. The Cowboys try to get back into this ball game, have good field position moving first and 10, and it's the inside give to Emmett Smith. Boy, Emmett Smith coming in here just a few days practice. Now he, his last game in pads was December 30th. And so you go that whole while and you hold out and you're not in pads and all of a sudden you come in and you're, you're playing against guys who've been in pads, they feel comfortable, they've gone through a preseason. You look at his stats from Florida, what a terrific gifted runner he is. It's gonna take a while though for him to learn the system and feel comfortable. On second and nine, McKinnon couldn't haul it in. But Aikman was hitting that pass in the first drive when they moved the ball so crisply down the field. He's looking up wondering, uh-huh. That pressure's maybe getting to me a little bit. A little quick release on that one. Is that what happens? Once in a while you start to feel, you start to sense the defensive lineman coming in and then you hurry it a little bit and you're just off a little bit. That's quite possibly what's happening here. He's getting the, the call from the sideline. Babe Laufenberg is the one on the right and teams do that. They have two people signal in the play so there's no chance of stealing it. So one guy's live, one guy isn't. And that might change from quarter to quarter. Aikman is now 0 for 8 in his last pass attempts, and he faces a third and nine from the 49. Cowboys two of seven on third down conversions. Here comes the rush, and there goes eight minutes. Lee Williams wrapping him up the third sack of the game for the Chargers. Which is what we expected from that Charger front. Jim, it appears that they've simply beaten on the Cowboy offensive line for so long they're getting tired. That's true. You know, Lee Williams had 14 sacks last year. Here's the, the great pressure by Lee and a good idea by the official to blow the whistle. Leslie O'Neill had a chance to take a shot. You can see number 91, but he pulled off. Good play by O'Neill. Again, Lee Williams just beating his man. Oh, boy. Lee Williams' motto, attack, seek out, and destroy. A little bit backwards, but it all sort of applies. Mission accomplished on that one, Lee. 3.20 to play in the quarter. Mike Saxon is punting for the sixth time. Beautiful kick. NFL Live, we've got the lineup next Sunday on NBC. Here are the Chargers moving first and 10. Rod Bernstein is stacked up behind the line. Let me ask you something, Jim. Rod Bernstein started as a tight end. Right. What about the transition from tight end to running back? He played a lot of running back in college at Texas A&M, and so he's familiar with the position. And actually, if you, if you talk to people who've watched Rod over the years, he looks more comfortable in the backfield. He had the most exciting preseason, I think, of any Charger. He gets out in the open there, and he really, really runs in an exciting fashion. And perhaps more than anyone, if I'm correct, he has something to prove after coming off that injury. Absolutely. There's, a, uh, there, there's murmurs around camp that maybe he's a little soft. He's not a, a tough enough guy to play. And he disproved that in the preseason. On second down over the middle. And Eugene Lockhart knocked it away. Eugene, the hitting machine. Yeah. That's a rookie, Eugene. Don't let him get away with it. That's the type of stuff that will fire up a defensive unit. And, you know, you ask me about this defense. What's going to happen now? It's going to take plays like that where the leaders really get together and say, okay, we have to score on defense to win this game, to turn it around, to give us the, the spark that we need. Here in the second half to tell you about the offensive production, San Diego has one first down, the Cowboys have none, and we have two minutes and 11 seconds to play in the third quarter. And we have a key third down situation here on the 20-yard line for Mark Velasic. Three wide receivers in the game for the Chargers. Sending up the screen to Roddy Harmon. Harmon trying to get to the outside, but the Cowboys stop him, and the punt off continues. <laughs> Tony Tolbert. On the stop for Dallas, number nine, a big victory. Yesterday he knocked out McEnroe, and today he finished off Andre Agassi. That is a big surprise. Flag on the 
play as Kidd boots it away. The fair catch called for and made by Rod Harris at the 35-yard line. Jim Tunney having words with John Kidd. Motion against the Chargers. And Jimmy Johnson says, we don't want yeah, any part of it. that. We'll take the ball. That's right. We have the ball. Decent field position. Now, Cleveland still leading Pittsburgh. The Raiders, 14-6. That would be a surprise if they beat Denver. Atlanta having a field day with the Houston Oilers. And there's your other games in progress right now. Miami's made a game of it with New England. You see the clock first and 10 for the 35. The give goes to A.G. trying the right side and not much doing. Yeah, big Joe Phillips over there. A lot of chargers. Gary Plummer. You know, Phillips is a law student. And you see Plummer there. Free agent guy who joined the team. New Ron Lynn, the defensive coordinator from his college days and from his USFL days. And he has just completely asserted himself. He has moved over to a different position to make room for Junior Seau. The first round draft pick. You see Seau number 55. Doesn't matter to Plummer. He's one of those guys who's going to just dig in and do the best he can. Clock running 45 seconds to play in the quarter. Second and six. Three wide outs in for the Cowboys. Play action. Long ball. He wants Dixon. And he was man for man with Sammy Seal, who knocked it away. I'll tell you, Jim, most clubs that I have seen in the preseason after looking at tapes of the Chargers play have gone deep on Sam Seal. Well, the choice is to go deep on Gilbert. Gilbert had seven interceptions last year. Gilbert is one of the most gifted cornerbacks and one of the most underrated or underappreciated around the country. Here's Sammy Seal. You can see the contact right there, and that's the incidental contact, although the 42,000-plus officials in the stands <laughs> didn't think so on that play. I think they're still upset by that call against Isaac Holt in the first half that set up that Charger touchdown. It's the difference in the ball game. You bet. Aikman looking at a third and six from the 39. 34 seconds to play in the quarter. Trying to quarterback draw. That's been the most efficient weapon they've had today. But that's the kind of play that a quarterback in Aikman's position runs successfully will spark the rest of his teammates. Okay, guys, we're not having success on the things that we planned. I'm not passing the ball on target or the guy's covered, but we can move the ball. Here's one way how. And you can just see how that offensive line just collapsed everybody down in the Charger front, and Aikman ran. Now, last year, he tried that 14 times, and 11 times on third and fourth down, he was successful. So he knows when to run plays like that. It took a while, but Troy Aikman and the Cowboys finally picked up a first down in the third quarter. Will they get back into the game and tie it? We'll find that out in just a moment. Intended for Rod Harris is incomplete. The Dallas Cowboys trailing the Chargers 14 to 7, and it was not what you would call an exciting third quarter of offense for the San Diego, for the Dallas Cowboys. But there is a note we'd like to pass along. The Charger, uh, the, the Cowboy cheerleaders have changed their uniforms. They have surprised us all with a new ensemble early in the game. And Fred, journalistically, was able to spot that between uh, the third and fourth quarter that uh, something had changed on the sidelines. The question is, will the offense change for the Cowboys on the field now? With three wide receivers in the game, and there's a completed pass. It's been a while. That one went out to Kelvin Martin. You gotta love the effort by Kelvin Martin, and Troy Aikman just loves the fact that he's completed another pass. But Martin keeps those legs churning and trying to break the tackle. He really has come all the way back from that knee surgery. He had it last November, and another. Speaking of Emmett Smith, he's a tailback now. But the Chargers were trying to make some changes defensively. Couldn't get it put together on the field, and wisely took a timeout rather than lose yardage. So with 14 minutes and 17 seconds to play, the Cowboys... Stadium, Irving, Texas, Troy Aikman and the Cowboys facing a third and three from the 42. Fake to Emmett Smith, and cuts it off, he's got a man, A.G., and there's a penalty marker flying into the middle of the line. Tommy A.G. has a first down, but let's check the marker. Junior Seau made the tackle. Aikman's looking around thinking, uh-uh, uh-uh. Now, when that flag was thrown, you would think it's against the, the Chargers, and they're, they're talking to Aikman, so that would seem to confirm it. Holding defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Dallas fans have had little to cheer about past that first quarter, but now they have something to cheer about. The play-action pass took everybody out of position, and one thing Aikman does so well is move with that football, has great body control, is able to make a pass like that, and A.G. gets as much as he can out of it. 
Good play, well thought out because of the over pursuit on, on behalf of the Chargers. Just into the final quarter of play, Cowboys first and 10 from the 26. He's inside the 25-yard line. Now, remember earlier we talked about Jimmy Johnson and what he told his ball club before the game began today. The key, if we're patient, we could lose this game. If we're not patient, we could lose this game in the offense. first. Illegal motion, offense. First two quarters. If we remain patient, we have a chance to win it late in the game. They've been patient. It's exactly what has happened. Offense, five yards, still first down. What we had there was the motion man cutting up towards the line of scrimmage too soon, and so that negated a small gain on the part of Emmett Smith. But Jimmy Johnson said, hey, you know, he admitted to us, he's not a great team. They have a lot of draft picks stockpiled for the next couple of years, but he thinks that this team will get better and better as the season goes on. Well, he knows he has to make trades and make changes. I mean, well, he's good at it. <laughs> In 18 months, he's made 24 different changes. <laughs> Plenty of practice. Quick out. Kelvin Martin. And a penalty. And a penalty. Somebody came in there late. Was it Junior Seau? Yes, I could see the, the official. Personal foul, number 55. Unnecessary roughness. 15, first down. Last week in the final preseason game, he's ejected for fighting, and now, again today, a critical penalty. Especially in this field position. Last week against the Raiders, Seau played in two plays. The second play from scrimmage that he was in there, he was ejected for fighting. Now here he is coming in, oh, spearing. It's a late hit. Now he's, he's lucky in a situation like that. If it's, if it's really a flagrant spear, he could be ejected from the game again. In this case, not the thing to do. You have to pull off in a situation like that. Again, a very young guy came out after his junior year at USC. First and 10 from the 12-yard line. Cowboys have a chance to tie it up. Daryl Johnston banging forward. He's inside the 10. All right, we're set for an update. Thanks, Bob. Raider Mystique back with Art Shell at the head coach here in Dallas Cowboys, trying to tie it up. Second and six from the eight-yard line. on the play. Hold everything. There's a penalty flag. Holding offense. Ten yards. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy can't believe it. Can't believe it. The penalties have really hurt this club today. There's Johnson. He Boy, he had clear sailing. Some great blocking in this case, aided by that holding penalty, obviously. But penalties have played a Offense, big part. Ten yards, it's still second down. Didn't get the number. Does it matter? You know, this offensive line for the Cowboys has done a great job on this series until that point. They've protected Aikman, they've given him time. Of course, the play calling has gotten a little more creative with the play action and the, and the rollouts. The key word, momentum. Does that take steam out? Well, you bet it does. Look at this, second and uh, forever. 16. 12.20 to play in the game. Still going with three wide receivers. Instead, they hand it off to A.G., who battles his way inside the 15-yard line. You could just kind of feel the emotion drop a little bit on the Cowboy side of the ball, and the fans dropped a little bit as well. That's true. They can still get a first down inside the five. Down around the two-yard line, the Cowboys would get a first down. They're faced here with a third and 11 for the first down, a third and 13 for the touchdown. What are you looking at here? Well, they've tried the draw right there. Uh, what the Cowboys used to love under the old regime was a throwback screen in this field position. Uh, they have shown that play once. Maybe we'll see it again. What we see is a timeout. Let's make sure before we do anything, it's too important to play. Certainly the Cowboys are going to try and change the average here. Just four of 11 on third down conversions, and now they face a third and 11 from the 13-yard line. Aikman scrambling now and forced to run out of bounds. Leslie O'Neill with the big pressure once again as Aikman looked downfield, and that's as much as a a coverage pressure as anything else because he just looked downfield and there was nobody open. 
That'll bring on Ken Willis. Rookie out of Kentucky, they tell us that he gets the ball up so quickly, he's like a punter. He's a very tough man to block when he kicks the ball. I wonder if he could swallow right now. I wonder if he's feeling the pressure. Hey, welcome to the big leagues. He won the job. 31-yard attempt. Out of the hole to Jay Novacek. Ken Willis adds to the Cowboys' score. 31-yard field goal. They now trail 14 to 10. 11:26 to play in the game. And it adds to the importance of the miss earlier in the game by Fouad Ruvez for the Chargers, as he missed the opportunity to put the Chargers up by a lot more. So this one's a long way from over. These teams were involved in so many close games last year. Well, if you check the stats from last season, 13 of 16 Charger games were decided by a touchdown or less to carry it farther. In 12 of those 13, San Diego had the lead or a chance to take the lead in the final two minutes, so close finishes are nothing new to the San Diego Chargers. And don't forget tonight following the game, NBC News will present a special, The Summit in Helsinki, followed by the double feature night, Polly starring the Cosby Show's Felicia Rashad, and Keisha knight Holian, and you're going to be there for that, aren't you? Jim? Oh, absolutely. I know he is Learjet home, <laughs> just to make sure he sees Felicia Rashad tonight. And then, what more can you ask? A fight for Jenny, starring Mike, uh, Miami Vice's Philip Michael Thomas and Leslie Ann Warren, and that is tonight on NBC. So be with us for that. Willis readjusting the ball on the tee. There's plenty of time, 11.26 left to go in this uh, fourth quarter, left in the ball game. Anthony Miller to the top of the screen, deep. And Donald Frank to the near side. Well, the Chargers wouldn't want it to anybody better than Anthony Miller. And he carries it over the 25-yard line before he is dropped by Lester Brinkley. Great hang time on that kickoff. There's Mark Vlasic eyeing up that situation, talking to Dan Henning. Look at the chin strap he has on. That's not a bad idea. All right, scores from around the rest of the league now as we update you with the 10-minute ticker. Raiders, thanks to two defensive touchdowns leading Denver, that would be a surprise. Atlanta just walloping Houston. The Jets have taken the lead over Cincinnati. And checking the rest of the scores, Buffalo still ahead of Indianapolis, New England leading Miami. Cleveland 10-3 over Pittsburgh in the fourth. Here we have 11-18 to play in the Chargers, first and 10. Joe Caravello could not hold on to the pass from Mark Vlasic. One thing you can say about Joe Caravello, he is strong. For the third year in a row, he won the Pro Football Arm Wrestling Championship. A little bit of pressure from the front line of the Dallas Cowboys. The pass a little bit underthrown, but a catchable ball. Again, earlier in the game, Vlasic was putting that ball right on the money. Caravello may not hold on, but he'll break your arm. Look at the chin strap of Vlasic. That's one of those old-time padded ones. Not a bad idea for a quarterback these days. Second and 10 from the 27. Bernstein breaks the tackle of Lockhart and dives forward for extra yardage. Rod Bernstein, 6'3", 238, first round pick in 87, out of Texas A&M, around these parts they call them Aggies. <laughs> Just 25 years old. Third and four from the 33. Early in motion. Lassick has time here. And finally dumps it out to Early. He's got a first down. And he's finally run out of bounds. So the former teammates at the University of Iowa, Vlasic and Early teaming up for a first down. Yeah, Isaac Holt overcommitted on that play. Vlasic really taking his time as, again, the pressure just wasn't there. After the initial pressure there, look at it, wide open. No thoughts of running. He was just waiting. And then Isaac Holt, I think, thought he was closer to being the out-of-bounds marker than they were. And so he tried to push Quinn Early out-of-bounds, and it didn't work. And Early easily picked up that first down. 20-yard gain for the Chargers. They're on the move now, first and 10 from the 47. 10 minutes and 20 seconds to play. Quinn Early hurt last year, a knee problem, missed part of the season. Derek Walker in motion. Classic gets, oh, almost intercepted, awful. 
Oh, my. <laughs> Daniel Stubbs, look what I found, and he couldn't hold on to the ball. James Washington with the great pressure in the backfield. He was pounding his head saying, ah, I should have had the quarterback. And then downfield, his teammate was pounding his head saying, hey, I should have had that interception, and he should have. Vlasic doesn't even see it to the last instant, gets away. That idea to throw that ball under that kind of pressure without really looking to see what was over there. What was over there? A Dallas Cowboy. Daniel Stubbs was thinking goal line, was thinking six, was thinking I should have held on to the ball. Very creative from your defensive end in pass coverage. Second and 10 of the 47. Bernstein just dropped it. Ken Norton had him defensively. Now that happens, you know, with, with Stubbs in that last play, a great opportunity for him to uh, come up with the big play, and you, you surprise the front, uh, the offensive line so much when you drop a guy like that off. The Bernstein's wondering about that pass right there. He has not had a terrific outing. Vlasic as a quarterback, is he a little shaken after nearly throwing that interception? Not Mark. You know, he, he learned so much from Dan Fouts. He was with Dan for a year, Charger organization, uh, and then he spent a, you know, a couple of years just learning the system. And the one thing he told us he learned from Fouts was patience and also that quick release. Try to get the ball off, make your decisions, and live with it. Third and four. This time he gets it off. And the Chargers will be short of the first down. Walter Wilson made the reception. He's dropped at the 40-yard line. Bill Bates and Ron Francis defensively for the Cowboys. But now we face that short yardage situation, fourth and four, fourth and three on the 40. Do you punt or do you go for it? In this situation, the time left on the clock, the lead up by four, you definitely punt the ball, which is easy to say because they've already made their decision. I can look out and sound, sound very brilliant. But uh, no, I think in this situation, too close to midfield, too many things can go wrong. John Kidd is standing back on his own 45. Now the Cowboys don't believe that it's going to be a punt. They have their defense in there and they have set up a more or less a prevent up front. Rod Harris is deep. High kick. Harris calls for the fair catch. Could that catch the corner down there? What marvelous punt coverage. The yeah, ball batted out of the end zone. They're going to spot it on the one yard line. That really is incredible. What marvelous punt coverage. We'll take another look at it when we come back right after this. Came back in and downed it. Now we have been told that they are reviewing this call. Uh, and you can tell it by the reaction that the crowd just is not real happy with the, with this call at uh, all. Check his foot, Jim. Now that, it's hard to tell right there, but if his foot Donald is Frank. on the goal line, Donald Frank, then he can't bat the ball back. And now 24 is out of bounds. 24 is out of in. bounds and comes back in. Is he out of bounds? Can you down the ball in a situation like that? Rest assured, Jim Tunney will soon explain it to us. Remember, we have a two-minute limit this year. At least they're trying to review plays in two minutes or less. Now we had the situation earlier in the game where the wide receiver, as you see the replay officials there, they're trying to figure things out. Earlier in the game, a receiver went out of bounds and caught the ball. Of course, you can't do that. That's a penalty. Uh, in this situation, we're thumbing our way through the rule book. All right, one more time. Let's look closely again. Two questions here. First, is his foot on the goal line? And second, did the man come in from out of bounds? Number 27, is he in the end zone or not? There's his left foot. Well, from this angle, it, it looks like he's on the line. It's hard to tell, but yes, it does look as if he's in. And then the second question. He's out of bounds right there. He jumps. And the roar of the crowd you hear each time we look at the play, they're seeing it on the scoreboard in the stadium. And the official right there spotted. <laughs> and he's waiting. Yes. Upon review, a play stand. First stop. A little drama for Jim as well. <laughs> Jim milking his moment for a minute. At the local, you know, Kiwanis, they'll, they'll stop when you take the microphone. Here at the stadium, when you make an unpopular call, Jim, just just talk. Boy, what a hole the Cowboys start from. First and ten from the one. Ag banging forward. So give credit to Donald Frank, the rookie, free agent. He learned his lesson well. He could have made it a lot simpler. When it's an uncontested play like that, the, the uh, punting team can go down and catch the ball. He could have made it all a lot easier. But let me point out also, Jim, that this is one of the inequities of the instant replay ruling because in some games you might have 12 cameras, on some games you might have five cameras. They'll be positioned differently around the stadium, and you're not always going to get the same kind of angle. So that definitely was inconclusive. 
as you pointed out. Second and eight. Clock running, 8.30 to play. The 14-10 ball game, the Cowboys are trailing. To throw out of his own end zone. Is over the five. But that must be a lonely feeling, being in the Cowboy pocket as the quarterback after all the pressure he has faced. And you see the... Martin Bayless, the safety for the Chargers, part of that active secondary. There were three guys over there to help him make that tackle. What a marvelous person Martin Bayless is. During the offseason, he oftentimes hosts free football camps for youngsters. I know he hosted one with Keith Byers uh, in Dayton, Ohio. Another time this summer, I believe, he hosted a scholastic achieving camp for youth in San Diego. Always given to the community. And the kids that were invited to the camp were the kids with the good grades. He was trying to reward them. Nice thought. Right in the hands of Rod Harris, and that's a bad place to hit him. Set for an update. Here's Bob Costas at NFL Live. Well, Our story here, San Diego leading Dallas 14-10. That's time remaining in regulation, 7.35. And it's the heavy right leg of Mike Saxon back in. Jerry Mays again deep. Good kick. Drove him back to the 42-yard line. Mays trying to get around the right side. A good block there on Bates, but Mays couldn't spring it. You gotta love Bates. He's down there so quickly. He forced Mays to run further to the sideline, and more pursuit came. So Mays, get the ball back. Let's get down there. At least pick up a field goal. 49-yard punt, five-yard return. So the Chargers moving first and ten from their own 48. And here's Craig McEwen checking in for Joe Caravello. Checking in late, maybe with an audible. Numbers on Vlasic, 15 of 28, 123 yards. And this is something they probably scouted out. The Chargers coaches probably recognize something on that Dallas defense. Derek Walker is in the tight end, as is Arthur Cox. And they're both on the left side. There goes McEwen to the same side. And here is Vlasic. Derek Walker couldn't haul it in. He went up for it, but couldn't come down with it. Elsewhere around the league, we get down to the final moments of the games. First finals we have in, you've seen them before, but in case you haven't, I think Kansas City beating Minnesota like that is an indication of things to come for the Chiefs. They're going to be a good ball club this year. Joe Bugle taking his Phoenix Cardinals against the club that he was an assistant with last year, the Redskins, and coming out on the wrong end of that one. Tampa Bay surprising Detroit 38-21. giving to Bernstein. Bernstein finding room on the right side. There's a marker on the play, and Bernstein is well into Cowboy territory, but let's check that flag. That's the kind of running, as he recognizes the play is going to be called back, but that's the kind of running that really endeared Bernstein to the coaches this summer. A lot of hip action, a lot of movement, a lot of churning. All for naught. Holding, 63, still second down. Yeah, it's too bad for Bernstein because a great effort. Really the first time he's had a, a little bit of running room and he made the most of it. There's the two guys pulling again. Courtney Hall and Eric Floyd, the left guard, left tackle. A broken tackle with the line of scrimmage is Bernstein, a big guy. I mean, he's a tight end running out of the backfield. He'll make guys miss like that in the line of scrimmage because you don't really get a great shot in close right there. And he rambles down, but again, it was called back, so the Chargers are faced with a second down and 20 on their own 38. Clock is running, 6.50 to play. Classic has time. Dumps it over the middle to Bernstein. You see Classic checking, checking deep, and nothing there. And he's from University of Iowa, but uh, he was raised in western Pennsylvania, Manaka. Few good quarterbacks out of that area. He was raised uh, six miles from Beaver Falls, home of one of our colleagues and a guy who quarterbacked a little bit in the NFL, Joe Namath. There's Billy Joe Tolliver from Boyd, Texas, currently in the plays. Apparently giving the signal he'll be driving the bus immediately following the game. <laughs> if you don't complete this one, Mark, you're driving. Third and 15 now. The Cowboys need a big defensive play here. Clock is running. We've got six minutes to play in regulation. Over the middle to Bernstein. Oh, look at the gang tackling. This Cowboy defense is really the second half. 
Yesterday, Jimmy Johnson told us about his defense. One thing we do well, we all get to the right place at the right time, and we all show up. And if we all do that, we know we'll be in the ball game. We don't have any one outstanding player on the, on the squad. We all have to work together as a unit, and there was a perfect example of that. And they've done that. They call themselves a blue-collar defense, a bunch of guys who are going to work hard, work every day, work to get better, and they have in this ball game. Now can the offense work and get back into it? The ten man front. Ten man front. The Cowboys are coming. Kid is in punt formation. It's a fake. Oh my. And they say he's down. The Chargers tried to fake it. Gary Plummer grabbed the ball. Nothing doing. Billy Bates on the hit. And Dallas takes over. You wonder why something like that is necessary with 5.15 to go. You have the lead. Why give the ball back at midfield? The Cowboys have not been able to move the ball. You have a situation where the last time you punted it, you pinned them back at the one-yard line. Here's a look. Plummer's number 50. The snap went to him. They expected the full rush, so they thought that Plummer had a chance. And who makes the tackle? Mr. Bates. That's a heck of a play by Bates. Heck of a play by Bates. The veteran player. And if you see, if Plummer gets by him, he's going for a long time. But no, Cowboys have the ball. Plummer 6'2", 240. Bates 6'1", 199. He gave away 31 pounds and made the hit. On first and 10, Aikman has his tight end, Novacek. Close to a first down. Clock running, five minutes to play in the game. So Aikman takes some pressure off himself right there. The ball is now in Charger territory. And with the time left, 4.50, the, the clock ticking, 4.55, they're in a four-down area. They, they can use all four downs now to get 10 yards is what I mean by that. Jim, again, faking a punt in that situation, when you would think fundamentally you would want to pin them deep. It's a brilliant call if it succeeds. If it doesn't, they're going to be talking about it all week in San Diego. Second and two. deflected at the line of scrimmage. Luckily, it wasn't picked off at the line of scrimmage, and that stops the clock with four minutes and 31 seconds to play. Big Lee Williams, again, making his presence felt. That's why he was in the Pro Bowl again last year. Number 99, there's Burt Grossman. He's working against uh, Nate Newton. But look at uh, Lee Williams just get up there. You're, you're sacrificing your body when you do that because there's no telling what's going to happen in a situation like that when you leave the ground. There's out Grossman. These guys got to be getting tired. Williams out of Bethune, Cookman, 6'5 and a half, 271. Now we got the rookie at left corner, Donald Frank, as the Chargers go to their nickel situation. He's working against James Dixon. The gift to AG is close. As I said, most teams consider this to be a, a four-down situation. You got the ball on the Chargers side of the field. The clock's running with 4.16 to play. Well, they picked up eight yards on the first play, and now on the next two, they, they, have, have, they haven't gained a yard. Yeah, they have to go for it. Here come the signals. That's Babe Laufenberg on the left, one of the assistant coaches in the dark pants on the right. Now Lowry calling in the plays. Well, this is big. Less than four minutes to play. The Cowboys, fourth and two from the 45. They have to make it to keep the drive alive. Three tight ends in the ball game. AG, he's got it, he's got his feet, AG inside the 30 yard line, Dallas on the move, first down, he's fired up. Boy, so is that crowd fired up. Over 42,000 fans cheering on their Cowboys, again, great blocking on the right side, you see there, and that's one of the toughest things early in the season is to get that short yardage defense coordinated because it takes so much time. And so you have guys doing something out there in the first you know, regular season game that they haven't practiced all that much. So the coordination there, Vincey Glenn can just gets bounced out of the way. Gil Bird should be up there sooner. This is a short yardage play. What are you doing way back there? And so things like that happen in situations like this early in the season when a team doesn't have a lot of preparation. 17-yard pickup, the Cowboys with 2.57 to play are now 
on the San Diego 29 yard line. And tonight, following the game, don't forget the NBC News special, The Summit in Helsinki, followed by the double feature night. Holly, starring the Cosby Show's Felicia. He's more of a home run thrower. You know, he can really, with the strong arm, he can maybe be the guy to put in there if you're behind in a situation with not much time left if you really want to air it out downfield. That's the story. Cowboys first and 10 from the 29. Three wide receivers in the game. But it goes to A.G. Who bangs near the 25-yard line. Leslie O'Neill made the hit. A.G., one of the great stories from this ballgame in that a guy coming into this ballgame in his third year in the National Football League, he had played for Seattle, played for Kansas City, and uh, twice now a plan B free agent. He carried the ball five times, or two times for five yards, a two-and-a-half-yard average, and already he's carried it a dozen times for nearly 60 yards. Clock running, 2.25 to play. Second and six from the 25. Two wide receivers to the far side of the field. But they come to the near side to kill the Martin. Martin is out of bounds, short of the goal line. Out of bounds at the one. Again, a beautifully thrown ball. Donald Frank, the rookie, overcommitted, thought he had something, not realizing that Aikman had put that much air under it. A terrific pass and catch. Two minutes, 13 seconds to play. First and goal. A.G. No. Lee Williams on the hit. That brings us to the two-minute warning, but let's look back at that at that pass one other time. Again, Aikman put the ball right on the money. It's the second time this game he has completely befuddled the Charger defenders. Look at Donald Frank, the rookie right there. Bensie Glenn luckily was in position to make the tackle. Great effort by Aikman. If you're a fan of either team, you're nervous with two minutes to play. Yard separates the Cowboys from taking the lead. And two minutes and a touchdown away from possibly Troy Aikman's first win as a starting quarterback. And for that man, only a second win as head coach. Cowboys have dropped 14 in a row at home. Big story today is A.G. 13 carries, 59 yards. He may get the ball here again. Fans on their feet on second and goal. Look at Jimmy Johnson's reaction after Troy Aikman dives in for that touchdown. Touchdown? Touchdown? You betcha. Oh, I knew it all along. <laughs> yeah, no problem. We had these guys from the get-go. Willis Tech's on the extra point. The Cowboys have taken the lead with a minute and 58 seconds to play. Now, the question on the Charger bench. Riding to the rescue out of Boyd, Texas, by way of Texas Tech. Billy Joe Tolliver has warmed up. He's on the phones now. There's Dan Henning talking with, in the dark jersey, that's Ed White, former player, Charlie Joyner with the hat. And he has to be wondering why, oh, why ever try a fake punt in a situation that we did. Well, as you said, if it works, you're a hero. Brilliant. But if, if it doesn't work, take another look at the score. How fitting that Aikman would score it. So much pressure on this guy. Last year, he held up so well going 0 and 11 as a starter for the Cowboys. Imagine that. The first rookie to start the season for the Cowboys since 1969 and a legend named Roger Staubach. Ooh. And so he came into a pressure cooker situation like that. Having on a team that had, had fired a, 
a legend in Tom Landry, a guy who was inducted in the National Football Hall of Fame this summer. All that pressure came down on number eight shoulders. And here he dives in after that scoring drive of eight plays, 53 yards. And again, it was only 53 yards because the Chargers elected to fake the punt. Aikman paid it off, and the Cowboys have the lead. A minute and 58 to play. Back deep for San Diego, Nate Lewis and Donald Frank. The kick of Willis. It's going to be Nate Lewis on the eighth. Finds a little room close to the 35-yard line before he stopped. Chargers have two timeouts remaining in the football. And remember, they wasted one on defense, on the defensive unit. So only two timeouts for the minute 53, and there is a change at quarterback. We haven't seen him all day, but on this final series for the Chargers, we do. Billy Joe Tolliver stepping up to the line of scrimmage. Tolliver, the man with the big arm. He can really fire deep. He did this a lot last season. He'd come in and really excite everybody in that offense. And uh, obviously, Dan Henning has a lot of confidence in Tolliver. From the 35, Harmon in motion. Tolliver. Incomplete to McEwen. It's been a long time coming, but the Dallas Cowboys are about to do something they haven't accomplished since September 25th of 1988. The Cowboys winning at home against the Atlanta Falcons. The key play here into the end zone. The Dallas Cowboys trying to break a long winless streak. An NFL record, 14 consecutive home losses for the Dallas Cowboys here at Texas Stadium. There's a guy who was there. Billy Bates, and today the fans on their feet. Tolliver back on second down, and he's sacked. He's sacked. And what a long time it's been for this crowd. They're acting as a 12th man now. That was a team meeting for the defensive line. Hey, guys, we'll meet at the quarterback. Last one there buys the drinks. The Chargers with two timeouts are going without a huddle on third and 22. Middle screen to Harmon. Jim, I've got to ask you a question. You bring in a quarterback. Yeah, they're calling a timeout now. For uh, let me ask you something. You bring in a quarterback that hasn't played the entire game. Right. You put him in a situation where he has to throw deep. He gets sacked. Wait, we've got to take a break. Stay with us now. We'll come back and talk more about this. We're forced into a situation where you throw long. It's third and 22. You have two timeouts left, and you go with a no-huddle offense? Yeah, especially after that sack. It's a situation where you need to settle your quarterback down and, and, and you compose yourself. You have third and forever, and they went with a middle screen and picked up some good yardage, but still. But on the biggest play of the game? It leaves them with one timeout, Fred. That's the plus side of it. They're left with one timeout now if they can pick up the, the fourth down, and they have a, a fourth and 20 on their own 25. Chargers are all for, due, all for two on fourth down conversions. They only have two first downs in the entire second half. This is the ball game. Tolliver, long ball. What could the thinking have been on the Chargers sideline? Imagine the thinking on the other side, though. There's Troy Aikman, and Tolliver was going to Anthony Miller the whole way on that fourth down play. Just no chance. No riding off into the sunset in this one for, for Billy Joe. But the Cowboys, exuberant on their sidelines. Still a minute eight to play, though. Still a minute eight to play. Well, the Chargers can only stop the clock once. And so you're going to see a series of, uh, for Cowboys fans, a sight they haven't seen in a long time. And that is the quarterback taking the snap and kneeling down. Chargers will use their final timeout. But this baby's how, over. How sweet it is for two former teammates from 1964, 
Bo Sporting, Natty Hairdoos. I like it. Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones. When they undertook this project last year, they knew it was going to take time to build. The one thing they did know for sure this year, it wasn't going to be as bad again. And for that man, Jimmy Johnson, it's been a long time coming, went at Texas Stadium. You imagine the offseason he had? I bet he couldn't wait for this day to happen. Having to, to endure that 1-15, in 15, replacing the legend, Tom Landry, he finally leads this team to a victory. Troy Aikman again dropping to a knee. What a great feeling for that young quarterback. Tommy Agee celebrating. Agee, one of the heroes. Listen to the crowd. And on the field, the celebration has begun. The Dallas Cowboys have ended the drought. Thanks to a last quarter score and a questionable decision by the Chargers special teams division, the Cowboys were able to come from behind and knock off San Diego, 17 to 14. The final again, 17, 14, the Cowboys. Coming up next, NBC Sunday night lineup begins with an NBC News special, The Summit in Helsinki, followed by primetime action, the doubleheader movie, Polly and a fight for Jenny. For Jim Laslavik.